Hey everybody, welcome to T-Equipment. In this video, we're gonna give you a quick rundown of exactly how to install the FLIR Pathfind IR thermal camera in a car or light truck. To demonstrate the process, we recently installed one of these cameras on a new 2019 Toyota Tacoma. Really quickly, just want to give a big thanks to our friend Felipe who helped us out with this install. Felipe is a professional auto tech and let us film this video inside his shop while he did the install. So thanks again, Felipe. So the first step in this install is to decide where to mount the camera, since this is gonna determine where you'll need to run the wires and how much of the vehicle's front end will need to be disassembled. So on the 2019 Tacoma, we found that the best mounting location was directly on the front bumper support. So to access that, we removed the vehicle's grill. Next, we ran the Pathfind IR to ECU cable through the vehicle's firewall to the camera mounting location. This is the cable included with the camera that has round jacks on both ends. On the 2019 Tacoma, we were able to snake this cable right through the existing wire tunnel in the firewall without any extra drilling or cutting. We zip tied this wire to the existing wiring harness running along the driver's side of the engine bay to keep everything clean and neat. At this point, we also ran a power cable from the ECU through the firewall, since for our build, we plan to power the camera directly off the vehicle's battery. We included an inline fuse just after the battery to protect the camera. We recommend you use a 15 to 20 amp fuse there. You could also connect the ECU power cable to the vehicle's fuse box. It really just depends on your preference. We'll talk about that more later in the video. Once our cables were run through the firewall, the next step was to find a place for the camera's ECU unit. The ECU cannot get wet and must be mounted somewhere inside the vehicle's cabin. After a little digging, we found a good location behind the vehicle's glove box on the passenger side. To access this location and run all our wires, we had to completely remove the glove box and most of the trim underneath the dashboard on both the driver and passenger sides. We then took the wires we had already run through the firewall and snaked them from the wire tunnel on the driver's side under the dash over to the glove box. When running these wires under the dash, make sure they won't get pinched by any moving parts or caught in the pedals. As mentioned earlier, we decided to power the camera system directly from the vehicle's battery. By powering it directly from the battery, the camera would remain on at all times, so we needed to add a relay and a switch to turn it on and off. You could also power the camera from the vehicle's fuse box, which would turn the camera on and off along with the vehicle and eliminate the need for the relay and the switch. Both methods will work and it's really your preference which method you use. To install the relay and switch, we first connected the power and video cable which comes out of the Pathfind IR ECU to the relay. We then connected the switch to the relay. We were able to find a black light-up switch which fit perfectly into one of the empty switch bays in the 2019 Tacoma. This switch is lit when on and dark when off. This method was super clean and made it look like it came with the truck. Here you can see our wiring diagram. We also included a download link for this diagram in the video description. After power was taken care of, we needed to hook up the video output from the ECU to our vehicle's head unit. The power and video cable coming out of the ECU only has a female BNC jack on it for video output, and our head unit did not have any BNC inputs on it at all. We were not using the stock Tacoma head unit. This vehicle already had an aftermarket Alpine head unit installed, which only had HDMI video inputs. To get around this, we ordered a BNC to HDMI converter on Amazon. This converter also required power, so we wired this into the relay as well so it would be controlled by our dashboard switch. The easiest way for us to do this was to connect a cigarette lighter power adapter to the converter and then splice in a receptacle for this to connect it to the relay. We also included a 10 amp inline fuse here just before the receptacle. Once this was all hooked up, we connected an HDMI cable from the converter to the head unit. Once all our power and video connections were made, the last major step of this install was to mount the camera to the vehicle. FLIR recommends that the camera be mounted between 19 and 31 inches high when measured from ground level. 
Optimal height is listed as 25 and a half inches high. FLIR also says that in order to get the best out of the camera's pedestrian and animal detection feature, the camera should be mounted so it is centered with the vehicle as best as possible. Make sure to mount the camera as level as possible with the road and try to align the center of the image with the horizon. We took all this into account and found that the best mounting location was directly on the front bumper support just below the grille. We used the included mount which comes with the FLIR Pathfind IR kit, but you can make your own mount if you prefer. Also keep in mind that the Pathfind IR base package does not include this mount. We found that the FLIR mount was the perfect height for our vehicle and screwed it directly into the front bumper support. We did have to cut away some trim from the lower grille just below the main grille for the camera to fit through, but the cuts were minor and since everything is black, the install still looks very clean. Once the mount was installed, we connected the camera and tested it. Once we confirmed everything was working, our install was complete. That's pretty much it for our install. Look out for our on-road demo video coming soon. If you have any questions or suggestions on ways to improve this install, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.